Good morning. I want to thank you uh, again for the opportunity to come before you and preach the Word of God. Each one of you came here this morning and you had a choice. And uh, I'm thankful for making that choice to come here and, and uh, worshiping God together. You might have changed your mind had you known who was preaching, but uh, that'll, that'll be kind of part of my, my lesson here. So today I want to discuss um, change. Uh, what is change? How do people deal with change? How do people accept change? Some examples of change and change that occurred in the Word of God. As Jason uh, read in, in uh, the first part of Genesis, um, you know, God created the heavens and the earth. And you talk about a big change. <laughs> that, that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty significant. God, God created this world for us, and that's a, 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 a change. And, and all through our lives and through the, the scripture and everything that we read in the past, change occurs. Tomorrow, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a new day. So first off, what is change? The definition of change that I have here is change is a verb. It's to alter, vary, modify, uh, mean to make something different. Change implies making either an essential difference, often amounting to a loss of original identity or substitution of one thing for another. So what's some examples of change? Uh, change means to replace one thing for another, to become different. And an example of change is someone getting five $1 bills for a $5 bill. Change is getting a new haircut. Change is a girl becoming a woman or a young man, become a, a, a boy becoming a man. So is change good or bad? Uh, change is not always good, but usually it is. Uh, it may force us, us uh, out of tired habits and pose better ones upon us. But it can also be stressful, costly, and even destructive. What's important about change is how we anticipate it and how we react to it. So why is, uh, why is change so important? Uh, changes, no matter whether they seem good or bad at, at, at that time, will teach you something new. External changes makes uh, you more flexible, more understanding, uh, and it prepares you for the future. Just as internal change will encourage you to progress, external change will give you the experience and drive to push forward. So what are uh, disadvantages of change? Change is never free. Uh, change requires you to give something up or do something different. Uh, changing the oil in your car takes uh, uh, time and materials, which all, all come at a cost. Uh, changing your phone, it costs time, money, and training. As we all know with new technology, it, it does um, require us to learn and, and do some things different. I remember just the other day, I was talking to somebody about their phone, and he wasn't up to... He was up to uh, the newer technology and he had the old flip phone. Um, he said, this is why I don't change phones. He said, I can't understand them. So uh, uh, in Christ, changes may force us to do something different uh, that you always have done. The way you may, may believe or, or uh, you may have to give up something uh, that you think is right but it's contrary to God's word. Sometimes that requires us to, to make uh, significant changes in our life. So why do people resist change? Uh, change can be uncomfortable. You know, uh, it can sometimes go against what you think may be correct. It can also leave you uh, not understanding why we're doing this change. Uh, or how does it impact you? You know, what are the consequences of change? You know, all those things are, 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 are things that we ask when change is pushed upon us. 
um, but it's also things that we may question ourselves. You know, change management sometimes needs to be uh, clearly defined and discussed before change occurs. Uh, it requires involving those uh, being affected so they can <clears throat> clearly buy into the change. Uh, you know, an example, uh, should, should couples talk about having kids before they have kids? You know, that's a big change. Uh, there are several changes that occurred in the Bible that uh, from a reader perspective, we can clearly see why it, or see why it's going to happen or why it happened. Um, but think about those during um, the time it was occurring. How did they feel? Did they fully understand why things were changing or why, uh, why God was doing some of the things um, that he was, he was doing? Think about some personal change that occurs in our lives. We go from crawling to walking. Uh, how much change does a single person um, to become a couple or, or uh, to a parent? Uh, how much do, change do they go through? How about um, from an adolescence to a teen? As parents, we see that change as a big, big change in, in our kids' uh, lives. Um, from middle school to high school, from high school to college, to working, to being out in the real world, to being on your own. How about, uh, uh, as I talked about earlier, marriage and having kids, big changes that uh, parents go through and, and you, you younger kids that aren't even married yet, you know, when your parents made decisions to have kids, I mean, that's a big change to, to their life as well as uh, uh, what, how they deal with bringing you into this world. How, how about going into the working or changing jobs, uh, being, getting ready for retirement, having grandkids, grandkids can change your life. Uh, all these things can be really big deals and even sometimes very traumatic. Uh, what are some of the changes that occurred in the Bible? <clears throat> Can you think of any that you questioned? How about uh, what happened in the Garden of Eden? You know, uh, John read about Adam and Eve. They went through some, some big changes um, that, that happened. Uh, the flood, did Noah and his family go through some change? Uh, we'll read a, a little bit more about that coming up. And what about Sam, Samuel, Saul, David? Joshua, Job, Daniel, they all went through some, some changes. Um, Rahab, Ruth, Zachari uh, Zacchaeus, Zachari Z Zacchaeus, and Peter, and probably one of the biggest names and the most uh, significant change we see, Paul. What did Paul go through? Uh, there's a lot of change that occurred in the Bible. I, I would... Uh, like to walk through a few specific examples. We'll read some passages about um, these and then uh, go a little bit more in depth. And I'll tell you that I, when I cut and pasted this, I, I cut and pasted the King James Version and as I read through this, I didn't really like the, uh, the versions um, of, the, of the King's James reading and I knew that it was gonna mess up some of my reading. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read from uh, the uh, New King James. So I'll be reading from the New King James on, on, on the verses I read here. But uh, what about Noah? Let's talk about, uh, I'm going to read uh, in Noah Genesis 6, and I'm going to read 9 through 22. Genesis 6, 9 through 22. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah got three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was always corrupt before, sorry, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, indeed it was a corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them, them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with a pitch, 
and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make it a window for the ark, and you shall fill, you shall finish it to uh, a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in the in its side. You shall make it with lower second and third decks and behold i myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life everything uh, that is in earth sh shall die but i will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark your you your sons your wife and your your sons wives with you and of every living th thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall uh, be male and female of the birds uh, after their kind, of animals after their kind, and uh, of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will uh, come to you and keep them alive. And you shall take yourself all the food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God had written. A lot of change there. Uh, If this does not bring uh, uh, some level of change uh, into your life, it, uh, the dedication uh, of Noah to build that ark for the very purpose that all man was going to die. Uh, so Noah had a lot of change. If you think about what he was told to do, um, you know that Noah was doing what God said, but I'm sure that he was really had a lot of thoughts. Boy, this is a lot of change. I'm building an ark. I'm building this huge monstrosity, and it's going to be there so that all these people outside of that is, is going to die. That's a big change to, to live through. I'm going to read uh, verses 7, uh, 1 through 5. So then the Lord said to Noah, Come unto the ark, and you and your, all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven of every uh, clean animal, a male and his female, to each of the animals that, that are uh, unclean, a male and a female also, seven each of uh, birds, of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on, on the face of the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters uh, were on the earth. So again, Noah, Noah is going through some real change. Everyone that is not on the, everyone or in every being that is not on the ark is going to die. Um, that's pretty significant change. And, and if you think about today, how, how would that affect you? Um, you would, you might question that, but God's word is, 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 uh, uh, whole and, and, and he's, uh, trying to do things that are right for each one of us. Now I want to read, or I'm not going to read about uh, Rahab, but uh, I just want to mention, you know, I won't go into detail, and, and I'll uh, give you the passages that you could go back and read uh, if you like, but uh, Rahab, how she uh, helped the spies uh, that Joshua sent to spy on Jer Jericho to prepare for the destruction, uh, to make sure they knew what is needed to perform God's request, which is the destruction of Jericho. You can read that on your own time in, in Joshua 2 and, and uh, Joshua 6. Those are uh, some good passages to read about, uh, about Rahab and, and what, what went on there. And then I want to skip forward and, and I want to talk about Ruth. Um, and, and we we probably all pretty much know the the story of Ruth. 
Um, but I'm going to read uh, in Ruth chapter 1 uh, through 15. 1 through 15. When the, ju- when the judges ruled, the events of Ruth uh, place... Sorry, I'm reading the wrong place. Uh, now, it came to pass in the days when uh, the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, uh, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. He and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Im- Elimelech. Elimelech and uh, the name of the wife was Naomi and the names of the two sons were uh, Malan and uh, Chilion Euphrates of Bethlehem Judah and they went uh, to the country of Moab and remained there then Elimelech uh, Naomi's husband died and she was left and her two sons now they took wives and men or uh, took wives of women of Moab the name of the river was uh, the name of the one was Orpa and the name of the other was Ruth and they dwelt there about 10 years then uh, both Malan and, and Chilion also died so that the women survived her two sons and her and her husband then she ro- arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had vi- visited his people by giving them bread therefore she w- she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and she w- went on the way to return to the land from of Judah and Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law go return each to your mother's house the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with me w- dealt with the dead and with me the Lord grant you grant that you may uh, find rest each in the household of the husband of her husband so she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept and they said to her surely will Surely we will return with you uh, to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are, are there still sons in my womb that they may uh, be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a, a husband. If I say, to, say I have hope, if I ha- should have a, a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me that uh, very, very much for the sakes that uh, hand the Lord has uh, gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods return after your sister-in-law. So Ruth is willing to go with with Naomi to make sure she's taken care of and uh, she's she's going to leave her her land. That's a that's a uh, a big change for for Ruth and and you know even for Naomi when she left her land with with her husband Elimelech um, that was a, a, a big change for her as well. Also, want to read in uh, chapter two, verses eight through thirteen. So, chapter two, eight thir- th- through thirteen. Then Boaz said to Ruth, "You, you will listen, my daughter. Will, will you not? Do not go to the glean, to glean in another field, nor from here, but stay close from close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap. Go and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men?" not to go, uh, not to touch you. And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from the, from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? 
And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to the people whom uh, did not know before uh, you did not know before the Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under the wings uh, you have come to refuge Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly uh, to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. So Ruth received a reward for what she uh, changed. She was she was she found uh, uh, favor with 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 the Lord. Um, Sometimes as we. make changes in our lives positive comes from it you know we give up things we give up things that uh, that may not feel right as we talked about the the change earlier so the next person I want to talk about (coughs) is Paul Paul probably is one of the most notable um, in the New Testament that made some changes Um, who was Paul Um, if you recall, and we'll read here in, in just a moment, Paul was formerly named Saul. Um, he persecuted those uh, he would eventually work to save. So who was Saul? Saul uh, um, approved the death of Stephen. You know, if we uh, read in, in, in Acts uh, chapter 8, I'm just going to read off of here a short verse here, but uh, so... Acts chapter 8 verse 1 and Saul was consenting unto his death he was consenting to the death of Stephen and 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 uh, Stephen being put to death and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which uh, was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the Apostles and then uh, skipping down into uh, uh, I guess Acts uh, 8 and uh, verses 2 and 3. And devout men carried uh, Stephen to his burial and made uh, lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into the house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. That's who Saul was. Saul was was uh, very much a, a man that um, was, was uh, willing to... Uh, put Christians to death or make sure that they were put to death for for what they were doing and then what happened to Paul let's read uh, we'll read uh, uh, Acts chapter 9 I'm going to read verses 1 through 9 Acts 9 uh, 1 through 9 then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked uh, letters from him to uh, the synagogues of Damascus so that if uh, he found any who were of the way whether men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem as he journeyed he uh, came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying Saul Saul why are you persecuting me and he said Who are you, Lord? Then he said, then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are uh, persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what what, uh, do you want from me? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city and you will be told what uh, you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul rose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him uh, by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days there without sight, uh, neither ate or drank. So Paul... Uh, definitely 
went through some change. Um, you know, if you, if you can imagine um, what he was going through because he, he is on his way to uh, persecute um, Christians and, and uh, now all of a sudden he's, he's dealing with something that is completely different. I'm going to read uh, verse uh, 16. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. That's what, that's what uh, was told to, to, to Paul. And then uh, continuing to, to read on here. Um, and Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, had, uh, you came as, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from, the, from his eyes something like scales, and he received sight uh, at once. And he arose and was baptized. So when he received food, he was strengthened. Then... then uh, uh, Saul spent some days with uh, the disciples in uh, Damascus. Immediately he preached the, the Christ in the synagogues and he, he is the Son of Man. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on, on this name in Jer Jerusalem and has uh, come here for the purpose for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that uh, Jesus is the Christ. Saul, uh, Saul made a change. And as I said, you know, uh, Saul was, uh, or Paul, uh, Paul was, uh, uh, came through a lot of different uh, things. He went through a, a, a major change that he was uh, persecuting Christians. He was doing things that uh, uh, obviously was against what God had intended. And we can read, uh, we can continue reading through uh, majority of the New Testament, um, what kind of person Paul became. And if that's not a clear example uh, that at, for someone in sin today that you can be converted um, I would tell uh, anyone that, that has, says that or has words that they, they cannot become a Christian to go read about Paul be, because Paul um, Paul was doing things to our, our, uh, our uh, Christians, our fellow Christians in, in those days that uh, was very very um, contrary to what God would expect us to do. Now, just a few weeks ago, we read about Zacchaeus, and I want to uh, go ahead and go back and, and read about Zac Zacchaeus in, in uh, Luke 19, one, verses 1 through 10. Luke 19, 1 through 10. Then Jesus entered the, and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see uh, who Jesus was, but could not uh, because of the crowd, for he was a short, short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that away, going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he he looked up and saw him, saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when he saw it, they uh, all complained, saying, "He, he has uh, gone to the to to be a guest with a man who is a sinner." Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, "Look, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone." By false accusation, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. So Zacchaeus, by making that change and, and, and uh, doing something 
uh, different. Uh, he he made he made a, a, a change to his life, and he received something that was uh, uh, beneficial um, because now the Lord uh, is with him. One of the uh, clearest pictures of uh, identity, identity transformation in the Bible is found in the life of the Apostle Peter. Before Christ, Peter found his sense of security in his own uh, competent, competence and self-reliance. His occupation as an expert fisherman and his courage were sources of, of confidence, his very identity. So Jesus made sure to sanctify Peter uh, in these two areas of his life. Now I'm going to read uh, uh, Luke 5, 1 through 11 to, to, for us to kind of wrap up with, with uh, some, of the, some of the different uh, people in the Bible that went through change. So Luke 5, 1 through 11. Maybe. All right, Luke 5, 1 through 11. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of uh, Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from uh, them where were washing their nets. Then he got into the, one of the boats, which was Simon's, and, and asked him to put out a little... Um, Put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught uh, the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, "Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch." But Simon answered and said to him, "Master, we have toiled all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will uh, let down the net." And when they uh, had done this. They caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they uh, signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both, bo both the boats, so they uh, began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down to Jesus' uh, knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am, sinful. Uh, I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch a fish, uh, a fish, uh, which they had taken. So, as I said earlier, Peter was a a great fisher, and they hadn't caught uh, fish all day, and uh, and now Jesus sent him out, and and uh, and that that changed Peter. Uh, Jesus uh, Jesus humbled Peter with a miraculous catch uh, that he de demonstrated lordship. He was uh, preparing Peter, as he was preparing, uh, as he is preparing each one of us uh, to do great and mighty things. Over time, Peter became uh, began to trust in Christ's sufficiency instead of his own. When Jesus called Peter out of the boat onto the water, Peter believed that if the Lord had commanded him. He could do it. Even though he lost focus on Christ and began to sink, this moment demonstrated how much Peter's faith and confidence in Jesus had already grown. Peter, Peter uh, changed and became such a great apostle, um, as we can read more about Peter in, in, in the New Testament. Those were all the examples I wanted to share, um, but uh, continue on there are... are uh, there are many uh, that we uh, read about in the Bible that went through change. As I spoke to earlier, change sometimes can be very difficult. Uh, change sometimes can affect our lives in ways we never planned or thought could happen. But change sometimes is good and has positive uh, results and outcomes. Noah, uh, he went through some real change. Only those uh, people on the ark uh, with him uh, would would uh, be the people that he saw in the in the uh, future years. Uh, Paul, from a persecutor to a preacher uh, of the word. Uh, Peter went from a fisherman to a fisher of men. Uh, we can go from a sinner to saved. So, uh, have you have you changed? Have you gone through uh, change in your life? Uh, will you continue to go through changes? 
as uh, many of the older folks would probably tell you that you're gonna have change continuously through your life and there's gonna be change you know this past year has had change that that has affected all of us in in many different ways I can tell you from uh, from my own personal experience I have uh, had a lot of change in my life so in just a moment we're gonna stand and sing uh, the song uh, selected 359 and after the invitation song I would like to make a couple more comments if you would bear with me so this morning the the lesson is yours um, if there's anyone that has not put on Christ and you feel uh, the time uh, is now we can uh, we can use the water here and we can baptize you and help you change your life if uh, anyone needs uh, the prayers of the congregation you can come forward and uh, as we stand and sing as well thank you